We greet you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus in reverence to the Word of God. Let's stand and let's open our Bibles in the Gospel of Matthew. The parable of the, the Great Feast. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. They are 14, but we're going to stick with some, starting on the verse 10. Matthew 22, starting on the verse 1st through 10. It's going to be projected. The Word of God says, So the servants went into, out into the highways and gathering together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Lord, thank you for the deliverance, for the blessings through the songs, and bring us grace to our hearts. Blessed be your name. We ask you that you can talk to us through your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. What are the supper or the feasts? It's a celebration of something. For example, if you make like 25 years of marriage, you're going to celebrate the silver, it's 50 years gold. And the word weddings means promise or vow. And there is a text in the Bible that talks about that. And this is the promise that he have made, the, the eternal life. For the wedding in the time of Jesus, there was an, an according a covenant between the father of the, the, the woman and the father of the, the man. They raised the kids, and there is in the Bible a mention of Isaac and Rebecca, in which the father of Isaac, Abraham, sent his servant to seek for a wife for his son. And there was a, a different one related to the wedding, is when the, the man goes to the household of the lady and he take a document. And this was a contract of a, of a marriage. So he arrived at the household of the, the woman. It was constructed, a paper, a document, a contract. And in the, this moment for the signature or the seal, even though it sometimes was verbally, there was a, a price to be paid. Dao obeyed, and this contract cannot be broken. So, because since that moment, that man and the woman was reserved for each other. In the meantime, if there was any infidelity or unfaithfulness, they would die. And there was another detail that we can after the signature of the verbal promise. After the, everything getting accorded, all the terms of that contract, the son returned to the, the household of the father and he will build a house for both. When the house was ready, the father 
I inspected the house, making sure everything is according to the plan, and he authorized his son to go and bring the, the bride to live with him. That's why Jesus says, I will go to my father to prepare you in habitations. And I'll come back once again, because where, wherever you are, you can be with me. Whatever I am, you be with me. So Jesus did this contract, this covenant. He left all the splendor of his glory and he came down to pay a price. The vow, a high price for his bride, which is the church. And this promise was made that one day he will come back to be with her forever. So, these wedding feasts is the celebration or continuation of the beginning of this contract. He is saying uh, a word in Hebrew that means the wedding. So this second part is the celebration of the feast per se. And the parable of the wedding feast talks about the kingdom of heaven. It talks about a father that was celebrating the, the feast, the banquet for the wedding of his son. So that was a, a common like a quotidian thing from the times of Jesus for them to understand the things of the kingdom of heaven. So there were some invitees. So Father sent the invitations and he says it's time for my son to be married and I'll send my servants. Uh, recently uh, we see something royal. Uh, wedding in in England, so the whole world, the media was showing the details, all the the the, the garments, the position, the postures, and the behavior of the royal feast. It was a big glamour and respect and reverence related to the royal family, so everybody came joyfully because they, f they would like honor to be invited. So these guests there, the king have them in high honor, high esteem. So he sent the servants to go after the one that was chosen very strictly like we say, by finger, choosing, picking by finger. Uh, when you invite someone, Luciano, you invite him. So uh, I'm expecting from him a uh, response, RSVP, to confirm if he will come. He can say, here I am, or he can approach. So the the head of the household sent the servants to invite the guests, but the first ones, the, the word of God says that they didn't want to come. They decided not to be participants of these wedding feasts. It's the free will. And brethren, imagine 2,000 years, a king send an invitation. Tell this guy to come to my house because there will be a, a feast. What did the invitee will think? First of all, he will be very shocked. A king inviting me. What's going on? But if they say it's a feast, I'll be joyful. 
the king has invited me to participate of the of the feast of his son's wedding but these first guests they didn't have this understanding they simply rejected i don't want to go and the bible says that god insists because the king represents god the son represents jesus the the servants represent the church full of the holy spirit which is uh, sent to announce the the wedding feast meu deus <laughs> the bible says god is delayed in irate but he is ready to forgive and and the moment of angry remember the mercy so god used his mercy once again and later on he sent all the servants to the invitees and interesting that the invitees are the same but the servants sent a different crew and he sent others to tell them so first he invite and the secondly he imposes and interesting that the other part is that now they were invited by the feast but now we're talking about the feast going on already taking place and we're talking about the supper dinner so we have lunch we have dinner and the dinner is the supper it's considered the supper it happens in the night behold my feast is ready my oxen is was killed the sacrifice was made <coughs> the 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 sins were forgiven and the only thing that needs to be done now is <coughs> we need to listen that the moment is uh, has arrived for the wedding feast so what we need to do is to go and take part of it this is what the lord was telling was saying say to the invitees the weddings the wedding is ready the wedding fe feast is ready for my son's marriage and the bible says that the invitees couldn't care less what that means they didn't give the value of this invitation for this invitation this invitation has no respect whatsoever for the king they didn't have any consideration they didn't want to honor the king with his presence with their presence and the word says that they made an exchange instead of participating of this weddings this wedding feast because of the field and is related to the world do not love the world and what is in the world they loved more the world the field of their interest and another one for a business the businesses of this world the materialistic things people reject the blessings they didn't have any consideration so the material things is more, are more important than the spiritual things the spiritual blessings they reject the invitation and they did not give any value It has no fear because one exchanged the feast for the field another one for the business and the the, the third one what did they do they stoned the servants and they killed them they killed the ones that the king has, in, has sent the embassy the embassies for the new 
the news, the good news that the king sent, the ambassador, the moment was ready. It was a moment of the supper of the Lord. The supper for the wedding of the son of the king. In Jerusalem, Jesus talks about that. When you read the text, and the king understanding and hurting this, he irate himself. He used of mercy, mercy and, and compassion, but they didn't use them. So the irate, the angry of God came. God is justice. The text says he sent his army and killed the, the homicides and put fire on the cities, on their cities. Jerusalem, O oh Jerusalem, that kills the prophets and stone the ones that are to you is being sent. How many times I wanted to as a chicken put the little chicks underneath the wings look 13 14 so he say prophetically he behold your house a house will be like a desert and in the year 70 after christ in the christian era a roman emperor called titus he invaded jerusalem he destroyed the walls the city and the temple. The only thing that got left is a wall called the Wall of Lamentations because they have rejected the feast of the son of the king. They rather go after their businesses, their field of interest, and because they killed the prophets and the the ones that God has sent anguish suffering so the the wall still standing as a memory against the the heartful uh, sinful heart of Israel the the walls of lamentation so the word of God says the, the wedding is ready but the invitees are not worthy the ones that was invited originally, they didn't honor the king. They didn't fear, they didn't respect. They couldn't care less for the invitation. Instead of receiving the blessing, they received the curse. Instead of receiving the grace, they was granted with a disgrace upon their lives. So the king says, go after the streets and whatever, whoever you find, bring it. So after the first invitees being denied, after they experience the judgment, he starts to call the other ones. He came for the ones that belonged to him, but they rejected him. But to all that received, give the power to be son of God to the, to the ones that believe in his name. They didn't born for the, the will of man, but the God's will. And God says, go after the small lanes. So when Jesus died and resurrected, he approached and he used the same expression, go around the world and announce the gospel to all creature. Whoever believes will be saved and whoever doesn't, it is condemned. So why the exit of the lanes? 
Why not in the main streets or the main roads? Because in Proverbs says, there is ways that look good, but at the end, it's death. So it's to go after the ones that are condemned. So these little streets and invite all that you can find. Why? Because the desire of God is to save all. So the detail here Whoever you find. So the Holy Spirit go and find the ones that are about to be condemned to find them and to announce them that there is a project for, from God for their lives. So the weddings are being prepared. And the supper is ready. Everything is ready. The sacrifice was made. The only thing that they have to do is to accept the invitation. So whoever participated in the supper is being blessed. All you find, all you have an encounter with Jesus, one day in the exit of the way, you have an experience of salvation, and to have that experience with the Lord Jesus, to accept Jesus, you are being invited to participate in this wedding of the son of the king. And now you are part of this project. Either good or bad. Why did the Lord call all of them? Because why he didn't call only the good ones? <laughs> so God doesn't make exception for for people. He called the bad and the good. <laughs> because salvation is not by the, the work. By the work nobody will be saved. God has called me. I have an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus called me because I'm good. I am a good citizen. No. God didn't call you because you're good. But, but God called us because we always bad. When I was about to get married, one of my uncle go to her house and say, please don't marry this man because it doesn't work. So he came to me and said, what do you think about it? And I said, what my uncle said is true. I don't... <laughs> you are you doesn't worthy, but I like you. I didn't worth anything, but God liked me. So blessed be the name of the Lord. We reached by the grace, by His mercy, not because we're good. God, God is the one, the only one that is good. You might say that you're very honest, but God is the only that is good. It's an adoration in Psalms that mention His goodness. So 
all goods and the beds. And we remember the, the net that is thrown to the sea and brings all kinds of fish. The good and the bad. So the, the weddings were packed. First, the celebration, the last seven days, and right after, there was a moment for the supper that when the supper is about to be served, there is no invitees. So if you read the passage, my wedding, my feast is ready, so nobody showed up. But now, even though the supper is ready, and there will be the full house, and the wedding was packed. It's the moment of the feast per se. First supper, first part of the feast, the seven days, now the supper, the table is ready, all the, the hardware. And the banquet was served, the, the invitees were there, and we, can, we might think, now let's sit and rejoice. No, not yet. <laughs> the king entered to make an inspection. He entered to double check. So he came to inspect the place. And he was not there to inspect the food, the table. He was to inspect it, the invitees, the guests. Before the wedding, per se, before participate on the celebrations of the sun, the wedding feast, the king enters the room, the ballroom, to inspect the guests. As God came, approached, and was searching everyone. And what that means to inspect the guests. The inspection was about the garment. Because we know several times was mentioned hear that when a king prepares a celebration, especially for the wedding of his son, when they receive the invitation, they receive the also the garment, the special wedding garment with the invitation. The first guests rejected the, the invitation. And the word says, that when the king entered the ballroom, there was a man, one of the guests, that accepted the invitation, that's why he was there, but he was not wearing the garments. He rejected the garments. Some doesn't accept the invitation. Others accepted the invitation, but reject the vests, the garments. When we go to Revelation, we hear the word, who are they and where are they from? And there was people from all over the world. And the answer was, these are the ones that washed their vests in the blood of the, the, the lamb and whitened them. So in the parable, there was a man that was not dressed accordingly. He has received the invitation, but he has rejected the vests, the garments. And what is the meaning of that? 
in our songbook, there is an answer for that. One of the songs says, whatever I was, I was I'm not anymore. Whoever is in Christ, new creature, everything is new. Not all that say, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom of heaven. But the one that do my will, the will of God is that all the guests, without exception, being wearing the garments with the special guest, uh, vest that he gave, he provided. Because the garment that he gives, it was very expensive, a high price. The sacrifice of Jesus represents these vests for my life, for our lives, for our salvation. And we cannot reject this. We cannot despite the salvation through Jesus Christ. Because in the heavens, under the heavens, there is no other name that we should be saved. He rejected the garments. He has rejected the project. Many times, men accept Jesus by mouth. But salvation is act and process. I accept Jesus, but now I have to walk in the way. As Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And nobody will go before God the Father without, through His Son, Jesus. This man has rejected the vest of salvation. And salvation, I said and I'll repeat, is not by the good deeds. When you see the revelation saying, the church of Laodicea saying, I am rich, I don't need anything. But the Lord says, you are miserable, you are poor, you are naked, you are blind. And I advise you, buy from me gold refined in the fire and garments to cover your naked, nakedness, to cover your shame. Some people think they can serve the Lord in their own way. And before the service, when we, we get together before the service, I have heard that all over the world, in Brazil and here. What happened, my brother? What happened, my sister? And they say, from now on, this church thing is not mine. I'll go home and I'll serve God in my way. It's me and God. I pray, I have my relationship, I'll, I'll shepherd myself. And I said to one of them, what? You're going to serve God in your way? So, you, so you're not serving God. And he was like, why? Because there's no way to serve God in your way. You have to serve God in his way. And the way that he has determined his words in the scriptures. Nothing can be removed. Nothing can be added. Some people love to live by good texts. Oh, I like that text. I like that passage. But this is not for me. You don't have to be like or don't or disliking anything but you have to absorb the whole project the garment needs to be upon you the parable of the ten uh, brides five were prudent five were imprudent five didn't go in Be why because they missed the the oil and their lamps shuts off they did not have the presence of the holy spirit anymore and now back to the parable that we're talking tonight this the citizen was expelled from the feast because he was not accordingly dressed for the wedding. Be dressed, be prepared, and your lamp can be lit. And this is what is written here. The king entered the room and noticed someone that is not dressed with a wedding garment and said, friend, how come you're here without the vests? And he was mute. Why did he have no answer? Because nobody has any excuse before God. The only thing that justifies is the blood of Jesus. If you do not have the blood of Jesus upon your life, if you don't have the garments that was given by God to your life, there's no way for you to answer before God. So he was mute.
In Revelation as well, the Bible says, the righteous be more and more righteous, and whoever is unjust be more un unrighteous. Whoever is holy, be more holy. Whoever is not holy, be unholy. Soon I'll come and my reward is ready to give to everyone according to their procedures. So when the king entered the ballroom, he was looking at the testimony, the behavior. If they were like dressed accordingly, if they covered by the word, his word, which is our justification. So, brethren, we see here a judgment. It's a final countdown. Wherever the feast happened, the wedding was happening, he entered and he made a judgment. We are living this moment prophetically, moment that the Lord will judge us. He is searching us. He is looking for our garments. Whoever is dressed with what he provided when he sent his son to die on the cross. So whoever didn't have, it was thrown on darkness. So whoever is not dressed accordingly will be out, will be left out. So the man that went to this feast without the, the proper garments represents many, many people that claim themselves Christians. They didn't have their lives transformed by the sanctification. Salvation is to leave everything, to serve God, is to, to exchange all your concepts, your vests, and understand and adhere to God's project completely in your life. In Revelation as well, it says, it was given that to dress in fine linen, purple and uh, shiny, because the linen talks about the justice of the saints. Blessed are the ones that is called to the wedding of the feasts. And this is the detail. It's not only the, the wedding. It's not only the supper. It's the wedding feast. And Revelation confirms that. Blessed the ones that are invited to the supper for the, the wedding of the Lamb. So it's a long period. To be called to the, to the wedding feast is the moment. The moment that we are living prophetically. We are living the moment for the feasts of the Lamb, of the wedding of the Lamb. And these words are faithful and truth. And truth. We are living prophetically this moment. The call is not only for the for the feast, but for the, the, the very the top of the moment, the final moment. The house is full, house is packed. Now it's the moment in the blink of an eye. We will be forever with the Lord. That man in the parable didn't have a chance at that moment to repent and come back and to bring the vest, the garments. But brethren, we still have time. If today you heard my voice, do not harden your hearts. It's still time. We still have time. The feast, the wedding feast didn't start. It's about to, but didn't start. So we are doing the moments that previously, before the moment. Any moment he will come in the clouds with power and great glory. But today we still have a chance. I have the opportunity to receive these garments, the vests of salvation, the ones that was given for, by the king, the one that cost a high price, which was the sacrifice of his son Jesus, today that you called, 
and you are at the exit of the way. You come by the death. God have mercy and compassion for your life, for my life. And no matter if you're good or bad, God wants to use us in his, in his glory by his mercy. Do not wait for the moment, the last moment, because there will be no time. It will be in the blink of an eye. So today, if you listen to the voice of the Lord, if God is talking to you, do not harden your heart. Accept completely the plan of salvation, the project of God for your life, because you invite it. God wants you in the eternity. He called you, and he paid a high price for your life. Honor the king with his presence, with your presence. Honor the king. Hail the king, because God has the desire to live with, with him forever. Amen. has shown tonight a pregnant woman, nine months pregnant, and she uh, so that she was anguished, sad. She was participating with us on YouTube and Zoom, and she was uh, began to deliver the baby, and the Lord sent two angels to help her in this delivery. And at the end of the service, she was able to give birth to a baby, it was a man, and then the angels give a name to this baby. And this name is there in prophet Isaiah. That says, Isaiah 9, 6, a son was born unto you, a child was given to you, and the kingdom is upon his shoulder, and his name will be wonderful, wonderful counselor, 
mighty God, Father of Eternity and Prince of Peace. What does that mean? It means that someone that is with us, a while ago, the, pro for, uh, the project of God is being generated in his life for a while now. Remember Mary? We don't have to receive Joseph and Mary because the one that is being generated in his womb was generated by the Holy Spirit. So for a while, the Holy Spirit is generating uh, work of the Lord in her heart. The child speaks about the gifts of the Spirit. But at a certain time uh, has passed, the baby needs to be born. So now the time of the birth has come. In what day was Jesus born? December 25th? Surely was not. <coughs> no one knows the day, exact day and the exact hour in which Jesus was born. But I know the day and an hour in which Jesus was born in my life. And the brethren also know the day and an hour in which Jesus was born in your life. And this sisters tonight, it is her birth, the day of the birth of Jesus in this sister's life. And why is this woman is anguished and sad and all this? So now go John 16, 21. When a woman is about to give birth, she is sad because her time has come. But once she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the affliction because of the pleasure that has been that has been born a, a man in the world, right? I know that the afflictions to the present moment cannot be compared to the glory that is, be, is going to be revealed to us. Sometimes the birth is a period of birth. I'm not a woman, but I know because I see my wife having great pain. The, the delivery is a moment of great pain. But once the baby is born, Sometimes we are going through moments of anguish, pain, and suffering, and sadness. But then when the child, which is the Lord Jesus, is born in our hearts, and now there is only peace, comfort, refreshing, and relief. And that's what the Lord is doing to the life of this, this sister. The Lord also has shown a woman, and she has with her, she has a, a vessel of clay. She always had this clay vessel, and she used this clay vessel in the church. I'm not saying the local church here in Pompano, but she used this vessel on the work of the, the Holy Spirit. She served the Lord in the house of God in the church. She had this vessel, and this vessel stayed in the church. But with time, she picked up this vessel and brought it home. And the vessel was forgotten, collecting dust, and unrecognizable. And that's what I said. Now I'm going to serve the Lord at home. I was used in the house of the Lord. I was instrument in, on the hands of the Lord. The Holy Spirit used me. But then there came a moment that I said, Look, I'm going to serve God my way. I'm going to serve God at home. So she picked up the vessel, which represents herself. The gift the Lord gave her, the call of the Lord for her life, and left it there. And time passes by, the dust falls on top of it, and then it becomes unrecognizable. And we, without being in the presence of the Lord, without being in fellowship with the brethren, we will not be in fellowship with God. Did you know that? If we are not in fellowship with the brethren, I'm not in fellowship with God. Learn this, without fellowship with the brethren, no fellowship with God. If we walk in the light, in the same way that He is in the light, we have fellowship with whom first? With the friends, with all of you, good people and bad people, all of you. And the blood of Jesus purifies us of all the sins. If you're not in fellowship and not being purified by the blood of Jesus, we're being a vessel despise and turn aside. No one served the Lord in their own way. There's only one way to serve the Lord is in God's way. But today she found she had a meeting with this vessel. Today she looked at her inside herself and realized her own situation. 
and she was she's missing if i if i have forgotten you jerusalem how much i miss you missing the house of the lord the brethren the fellowship of hearing the voice of god she's missing the praises missing feeling the presence of the holy spirit glory to god for this god placed this in your heart because God wants to rescue the sister, bring her back into his house and back into her pr to his presence. And that's what the Lord showed. She was brought here to this place. The angels helped the sister in the restoration. What is to restore? You know what restore means? Is to make it new again. We got old. So now the Lord turns us new again. Naaman, when he was diving into the Jordan, after the seventh dove, he came as a child with a brand new flesh. So this is what the Lord is doing with this lady tonight, restructuring her spiritual life. And the Lord shows that when this, this vessel was returned, it was adorned with gold and silver. What that means? gold and silver silver talks about redemption salvation and gold represents the power of god because only through the power of god that we are delivered we are free to go to leave our houses to come to the house of the lord to glorify his name and to bless him and to adore him so she feel grateful that she could be able to use again. Her heart was broken of joy. A new opportunity. God is giving us a new opportunity tonight. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Amen? For one more time, we have in a, given us opportunity to come to your house for our sanctification through the blood of Jesus. We bless you for at any moment we're going to have an opportunity to be with you. Deliver us from all evil and rebuke all the pains, all the infirmities. Give blessings to your servants in all the needs. Receive our service. We offer you in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say by the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, the eternal Father, and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit can be now and forevermore. Amen. The service is finished. You are visiting us and you are watching us through the media, through Zoom, 
Some are here to give you the right assistance to pray for you. And now, presentially in the church, if you need an assistance, stay wherever you are, and we're going to go to you to pray with you and to assist you. Tomorrow, we're going to have a volunteer help in the new church. So, after the assistance, we're going to be meeting, getting together to determine the time. Luciano is dismissed because I have extended too much. So the youth are dismissed for their meetings. Whoever needs a prayer, we are here to pray with you.